we're going to discuss how to graph quadratic functions. So again, quadratic functions are nonlinear functions in the form f of x or y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c where a, b, and c are all real numbers which means that a, b, and c can be any number on the number line and a should not be equal to zero. Again, why? Because if a is equal to zero, this term will become equal to zero and this is no longer be a quadratic function but a linear function. So let's discuss how to graph quadratic functions. Let us have an example. If we have f of x is equal to negative x squared minus 2x plus 1. So how are we going to graph this function? The first thing we should do is to solve for the vertex. Again, the vertex is the highest or the lowest point of a parabola. Like for example, this parabola that opens upward. So the, since this is an, a parabola that opens upward, it has a lowest point, which is the vertex. And that point is hk, okay? Where h is the x-coordinate and k is the y-coordinate. So why do we have to get the vertex? It is because if we proceed to a uh, table of values and solve right away for h or for, for x and y, we might get this portion of the graph or the other part. And we might wonder why the graph doesn't look like a parabola. So that is why we have first to get the vertex so that it will look like this. And remember that if we have at least three points, including the vertex and the points on the right and the left of the vertex, we can graph the function. So again, the vertex is a point h k, where h is the x coordinate and k is the y coordinate. So how can we solve for the vertex? So to solve for the vertex, we will be using the formula for h and k. So to solve for h, the formula will be negative b over 2a. And to solve for k, we will be using 4ac minus b squared all over 4a. So let's solve first for h. So h is equal to negative b over 2a. So for us to solve for this, we will need to identify the values of a, b, and c in this function. And it's a good thing that this function is already written in general form or its standard form. So let's first identif identify a, b, and c. So a is the coefficient of x squared. We can see here a negative sign, so it means a is negative 1. b is the coefficient of x, and we can see here negative 2, so that is a value of b. And c is the constant or the term that doesn't have variable with it, and that is 1. Now let's solve for h. h is negative b. Let's take the value of b, which is negative 2. So negative times negative 2 all over 2a or 2 times a, and a is negative 1. So 2 times negative 1. Solve. Negative times negative 2 is positive 2 over 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Divide. 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. Therefore, h is negative 1. Let us solve for k. So k is 4ac minus b squared all over a, substitute the values. We have 4 times a, a is negative 1, so 4 times negative 1, 
times C, which is 1, minus B, which is negative 2, squared, all over, okay, this is 4A from the formula, all over 4 times A, which is negative 1, solved. So K is 4 times negative 1 times 1, that is negative 4 minus square of negative 2, which means negative 2 times negative 2, which is equal to 4, all over 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4. So we have now negative 4 minus 4, which is equal to negative 8 over negative 4 divide. Negative 8 divided by negative 4 is 2. Therefore, k is 2. So h is negative 1, k is 2. The 4, the vertex is, so we will replace, okay, let's just erase this because we have already um, used that or used this values for our solving procedure. Let's have here the vertex hk, so h is h is negative 1, that's the x coordinate, and k is 2, which is the y coordinate. Alright, so since we already have the vertex, let's now solve for the other two points. So let's use just two, three points today for our graph. So let us erase this so that we can have bigger space for our um, solution for the table of values and uh, graphing. All right, so let's erase them. We will not be using them anymore. Okay, so again, the first step is to solve for the vertex hk and we have that already here next since we already have the vertex we will now proceed to creating the table of values all right so if this is the table of values all right so table of values looks like this it is a long rectangle let's have here four divisions so one two three okay um that's equally divided by four so one so let's have big spaces or bigger spaces okay i think this is now okay all right so what are we going to write here in the table of values on the first box we will write x so it means that the boxes on the right we're going to write the values of x and of course below x are the values of y but since we have here f of x so we're going to have f of x instead of y so it means that we're going to write on the left or on the right rather of f of x the value of the function given the values of x okay so i'll show you how to do that again let's go back to the vertex vertex is negative one two again vertex is either the highest or the lowest point of the parabola and it's on the middle part so let's write the vertex on the middle part of this table of values let's have h first which is the x coordinate so i'm going to write negative one on the right of x on the middle of the table of values and two is the y coordinate i'm going to write that here on the box provided for f of x at the middle of the table of values so it means that um f of x is two when x is negative one now that we already have this x which is negative one on the middle let us identify the numbers on the left side of negative 1 and on the right side. So again, in the table of values, if this is negative 1, the number next to it on the left is negative 2. 
and the number on the right of negative 1 is 0 or the number higher than negative 1 is 0 and the number lower or the integer lower than negative 1 is negative 2. Now let us solve for f of x if x is equal to negative 2 and 0. So let's start with negative 2. If x is equal to negative 2, so what will be the value of f of x? For us to do that, let us copy the original given. The original given or the function is f of x is equal to negative x squared minus 2x plus 1. Substitute negative 2 to x. This will become f of x is equal to negative times negative 2 squared. So instead of writing x, we wrote negative 2, which is the value of x. Minus 2 times, again, x, which is negative 2, copy plus 1. Solve. So f of x is this negative times the square of negative 2, or negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4. Okay? Or, if we enclosed it in a parenthesis, that's still the same as negative 4 times negative, which is negative 4. Proceed. Negative 2 times negative 2, that is positive 4. Copy, plus 1. Solve. So, the function, or f of x, is negative 4 plus 4, that is 0. We can actually cancel this, that out. And 0 plus 1 is 1. Therefore, the value of the function is 1 when x is negative 2. So, we're going to write here the answer we got, which is 1. Now, let's have this. If x is equal to 0, what is the value of the function? Again, copy the given function. So, f of x is equal to negative x squared minus 2x plus 1 substitute 0 to x. So we have negative times 0 squared minus 2 times 0 plus 1. So f of x is, this is 0 and negative 2 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. So when x is 0, f of x is 1. So if you notice, this is the vertex and notice that f of x on the left side of the y coordinate and on the right side of it are just the same. It's just because the graph of a quadratic function is symmetrical on the x coordinate of the vertex. We're going to discuss it later on. So again, the points on the graph are, let's write them, negative 2, 1. And then the vertex, which is negative 1, 2. And the third point is this, 0, 1. Let's plot the points. So in plotting the points, so let's use different color for the Cartesian plane. So we will be constructing the Cartesian plane. Okay. So this is the, the horizontal line. And the first line, the, this one, is the vertical line. So this is the vertical line. This is the horizontal line. The horizontal line is the x-axis. And the vertical line is the y-axis. On the intersection is the origin 0, 0. Let's have the points on the left of x-axis. This is positive 1. On the right of the x-axis are positive numbers, and on the left of x-axis are negative numbers, so negative 1, negative 2. And from the origin, the points above, or the points uh, on top of the origin are positive numbers, so the, this is 1, 2, and below are negative numbers, negative 1, negative 2. Alright, so since our Cartesian plane is now set, let us now plot the points. Alright, so plot negative 1 or negative 2, 1, negative 2, x coordinate, that is this 1, and 1 on the y. 
get their intersection. So this is the intersection. This is negative 2, 1. Next, let's have the vertex. Negative 1 on the x-axis, so this is negative 1. And 2 on the y-axis, this is 2. Get the intersection. Their intersection is this point that is negative 1, 2. Let's have the third point, 0, 1. 0 is on the origin, y on the y-axis, so this is the point. So it means that since x-coordinate is 0, it means that the point lies on the y-axis. So let's now connect the points in order from negative 2, 1 until the vertex, negative 1, 2, until the third point, 0, 1. Okay, so this is the parabola. So please bear with the, uh, my illustration. So this is now the graph of the given quadratic function f of x equals negative x squared minus 2x plus 1. So again, this is the vertex, which is hk. So let us identify the opening of this graph. So the opening of the graph is going downward. And even though we do not have the graph, we can actually identify the opening of the graph by looking at the equation, looking at a of our function. So a here is negative 1. So since a is less than 0 or negative, it means that the graph will open downward. And if it is positive or a is greater than 0, the graph will open upward. Okay? So since in this example, a is negative, it means that the opening is downward. And we can see that here in our graph. Now let's have the vertex. Again, the vertex has been solved at the beginning of the procedure, and that is negative 1, 2. And on the graph of a quadratic function, we have this, what we call the axis of symmetry. So what is the axis of symmetry? That is the point that I was telling a while ago, which is the point where it divides the left side and the right side of the parabola when we draw vertical line that passes through it. So again, let's have the vertex. So the vertex is this, right? Let us draw a vertical line to it. Oh, I was not able to apply the color. I chose, let's have this color. Okay, let's draw a vertical line. Okay, it's kind of slant because of my, the drawing of the graph. Let's have it this way. Okay, so, okay, let's change the color again. So again, let's say this is the vertex. So the vertex, HK, if we can see with this vertical line we drew, it passes through negative 1 on the x-axis, which is H of the vertex. And with this vertical line, it divides the graph of the function into symmetrical part. This part, this part of the graph is symmetrical to this part of the graph. So that is why we call this, this point where the vertical line passes through the x-axis as the axis of symmetry, and that is h, right? So that is x equals h here, and that is the axis of symmetry. And the value of h here, where the vertical line passes through x-axis, is negative 1. So the axis of symmetry is x equals h, which, which is negative 1. Okay, now let's identify the domain. So in a quadratic function, the domain, which is the values of x, it means that uh, the values that we can have here. So it means that what values of x can we use in a given 
quadratic function and we can we can say that that is the set of all real numbers it means that we can have any values for x we can have 10 negative 10 5 negative 5 and so on and so forth any number that can be found on the number line it's because when we extend the graph endlessly since it has arrowheads on the end it means that the graph will extend endlessly it will correspond to any values of x here in the graph but when we say range or the values of y it is just only limited okay so where does the graph or what values of uh, y are associated to the points on the graph so as you can see this graph only starts from positive 2 here until the negative infinity so we cannot see the graph above above y axis so it's only from negative 2 below because this will be extended until the negative infinity so it means that the value of y or range are the points from 2 below okay so we can say that since range corresponds to y it means that the range is y such that y is less than or equal to 2. It means that from positive 2 below or from positive 2 until the negative infinity. So the values of x can only be from 2 below. So if you'd like to try to continue this um, table of values, let's say you'll solve for negative 3, negative 4 and so on, 1, 2, 3 and so on, you will not get value of x greater than 2. And that's what is meant by this. So that will be all for today. Thank you. See you again next time. Bye.